Hi there, this is Alex. Welcome to Boomstick Gaming. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do every single grind and slide in Skater XL and make them look good. On top of that, I'll be giving some tips to tweak out your grinds, pop out of them naturally, revert out of them, and make them look even more realistic. I encourage you to watch through from beginning to end for those more advanced mechanics that will be woven throughout the video, but if you want to focus on learning just one specific trick, you can hover over the timeline below to skip right to the one you want. Skater XL is all physics based, so there is no one exact way to do many of these grinds, but I will be showing the most consistent methods for landing into them on purpose. I will be demonstrating all of these from regular stance, primarily with low ollies, also with control prompts showing your front and back foot inputs being the left and right analog sticks. Keep in mind if you're riding switch or fakey, all of these inputs will be flipped and mirrored, so I recommend focusing on trying to learn all these grinds first from your regular stance, and save learning these switch and fakey until after you have them all mastered. So let's get into exactly how you'll be doing just that. First off, one of the most basic level tricks, board slides, and the slightly more challenging, at least in real life, lip slides. This is one of the few tricks that has two completely different ways to do it, each with their pros and cons. Coming from almost any angle, if you push both of your feet inwards or outwards, you'll mid-air shift you right into a board slide or lip slide. The advantage of this method is that the game counts this more officially as a board slide, and will automatically smoothly turn you out at the end of the rail. However, the method I prefer that looks a little more natural going into it, being more of one fluid motion, is done by just using the left or right triggers to turn into place landing straight into it. The downside of this method is that you'll need to manually turn yourself out at the end since it will not try to do so automatically, which might be difficult to do on the steeper rails. Other than that, it's really just personal preference and which one feels more natural to you. Next, 50-50s, which although incredibly easy on a real board, are somewhat trickier to land straight into here in-game. After ollieing, if you press forward with your front foot and backwards with your back, you should land right into a 50-50, but sometimes a tiny mid-air shift with the triggers is necessary beforehand if you're coming from a sharp angle. Pretty straightforward, but 50-50s still can be tricky at first so that you're not accidentally landing into a smith or feeble instead. Next, their popular ones, nose grinds, crooked grinds, and over crooks. Nose grinds can be done by pushing only your front foot forward to do a balanced grind where your nose doesn't touch, or you can press forward with both feet to really lock into it and press into one. Personal preference on that one as well, but you might find that the balanced nose grinds still look a little more natural if you're flipping your board out, or you can press your nose down if you're going down a beefier rail or ledge. Crooked grinds can be done by pressing both your feet into the same top corners of each stick, and can be subtly more or less pinched into place, with small shifts from that 45 degree angle point. Over crooks are a little trickier, because you must angle both of your feet inwards or outwards at that same 45 degree angle point, and wait slightly to input it till after you're above the rail or ledge. This nose grind section is also a good segue trick into talking about smoothly popping out of your grinds a little more realistically. At any point during a grind, you can click in either the left or right sticks to naturally pop out to one side or the other. This is vital if you're trying to film something that looks a little smoother and realistic without flipping your board out or gigantically ollieing out. You can also combine this with the one foot catch mechanic primarily for flip tricks, and if you click in either of the two sticks immediately after you pop out, you can add even more style or purposeful sloppiness while popping out of your grinds. Next is 5-0s, salad grinds, and suski grinds. Very similar to the nose grind section, all that applies here for the equivalent grinds but from the back of your board. You can balance a 5-0 like a manual by holding down just one stick, which looks pretty good for flip tricking out, or if you press down with both feet, you can lock your tail down onto the rail or ledge, which usually looks better on larger, less techy obstacles. Salad grinds are done by pressing the same diagonal downward angle with both your front and back feet. Suski grinds can be done by pressing inward or outward at the same angle, but with the opposite direction with both feet. Next up is Smith and Feeble Grinds. 
Smith grinds can be done by pressing only your front foot forward at a slight angle to dip down just your nose. You can also tweak these out a little more if you use the left or right triggers to do a quick micro turn in the air at the very last moment before you land into it. Feeble grinds are slightly trickier and you need to press the other diagonal direction with your front foot once you're already over the obstacle. This one requires a more precise angle when approaching, so make sure you're not coming too parallel or too from the side when trying to land into feeble. Next is nose slides and tail slides. To nose slide, you'll need to turn yourself 90 degrees in the air with a slight press of the triggers and then push all of your weight onto your front foot forward. I prefer doing the single foot press on ledges since your board will look more natural sliding at a level angle but you can also do this trick by pushing both feet forward, which will tweak the slide upwards a little, which might look a little bit better on round rails. Tail slides are done in a similar fashion, but you'll be turning 90 degrees the opposite way and pressing down all of your weight with your back foot. Just like nose slides, you can use just one foot or two to shift the weight of the angle of your slide. Nose slides and tail slides are also a good spot to quickly show off how you can seamlessly switch to other grinds or slides without ollieing. Going from 5-0 to back tail for example, while you're grinding with both of your feet pushing back, you can start to turn into place with the triggers with a subtle shift inward or outward with both feet to naturally turn into a slide. This takes some practice to not over input on the thumbsticks so that you don't accidentally flip out of the grind instead. You can also use the previously mentioned pop-out mechanic as well, which allows you to grind shift into certain grinds that the other method doesn't allow, and vice versa. Next we have blunt slides and nose blunt slides. Nose blunts are done kind of similar to nose slides, but are somewhat more difficult to land into. You want to approach the obstacle more from the side for these, and try to wait till you're as close to it as possible to pop and turn into place. You will then be pressing forward with both feet to really lock that slide in if you manage to properly get up and over the rail beforehand. Regular blunt slides are done in the exact same fashion except you'll be turning the opposite 90 degrees before landing into it. This slide is all about patience and hitting that sweet spot with your ollie which is a little delayed to where you would normally pop for the other tricks. Since this is a trick that throws you out of it at a 90 degree angle, this is also a good time to talk about sliding your tricks on the ground and reverts. Right before or right at the moment where you're hitting the ground, if you push both feet inward or outward, you can slide around tricks a little more realistically than having to do all the spinning in the air. This is a great way to style out your flat ground tricks or to start doing some really good looking 270s and 360s out of your grinds. Next up is 180 nose grinds and 185 O's. The trick to getting into 180 grinds with a low ollie is usually delaying your inputs with your feet till halfway through a spin when you're already over the rail. You want to start spinning with both triggers immediately after popping and to get that last quick 90 degree turn then press both your feet either forward or backwards depending on the type of grind you're going for. If you try to input too early with both feet, you'll find that you might not be able to get in that full 180 spin before you land on the rail. If you prefer doing high ollies, you can pre-twist your shoulders when you're crouching to fully spin into these instead. Once you have these down, you can also learn to alley-oop into them as well, which means spinning to the opposite side of what you normally would, which can be done in a similar way to the regular 180 grinds, but you'll find that you need to pop a little earlier to land into these. Next, Hurricanes and Sugar Canes. Hurricanes can be done by coming at a slight angle and spinning a full 180 with the triggers, pushing forward with your front foot once you're about to land. This will dip and keep your nose pointed down, and that is a hurricane. A sugar cane is the same fundamental idea, but you'll be alley-ooping into it, spinning in that opposite direction. Next up, we have Bennett and Barley Grinds. Similar to hurricanes and sugar canes, you'll be spinning a full 180 into these, but instead of pressing forward with your nose, you'll be pressing down with your back foot. For the other way, you'll need to pop pretty late, close to the obstacle, get in that 180 spin, and then press down with your back foot to keep your tail dipped toward the ground. 
Now last, and definitely least, Willy Grinds. These were kinda taboo to do when I was growing up, but they have gained some popularity recently. Similar to doing a 5-0, you'll be pressing back with your back foot, but you'll want to pop a little earlier than what you would for a 5-0. If you time it correctly and come from a slight angle, your front foot should land on the rail while your back foot dips your board down. If you do choose to master willy grinds, at least throw in a nolly or fakie first, which makes them look a little better. And with that, those were all of the basic grinds in Skater XL. There's hundreds of variations to all of that once you start adding in spins and flips, so get out there, get creative, and invent something new. If you found this guide to be helpful at all, make sure to leave me a comment to let me know, or if you feel like this could have been demonstrated better, let me know what you would have done differently. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for giving this a watch.